to jump in with a long home run. Who's got the excitement? 43 is a one. Who should you turn to when you want a front row seat? Who plays a home team? Channel 43. We play the tribe on 43. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the McDonald's Inside the Tribe, along with Mike Egan. I'm Jack Corgan. Last Saturday at Jacobs Field, the Indians honored their top 100 ball players in the 100-year history of the franchise, Mike. And for you and I growing up in Cleveland, and of course you with your dad, and then playing against some of those guys, it was special. Well, it was quite a thrill. It really was. And it was a, it was a great weekend for the guys that were gathered, too, Jack. Uh, some more notable than others, uh, but I think everybody to a man just enjoyed coming back and being received that they, the way they were received at Jacobs Field as well. Well, you had some of those guys talk about maybe having better success in other towns, but feeling like they're always going to be an Indian because of the fans. I think so. And you know what's interesting is I think uh, sometimes we forget the, the history that this town does have in baseball, being one of the original uh, members of the American League, and of course the, the 20s teams, and then the 40s teams, and now the 90s teams. So, I mean, the, the history really kind of transcends the, uh, the 20th century. Well, and a lot of people wanted to see the ceremony, but unless you had a ticket, you weren't able to do so. Ah, but we're taking care of that. We're going to take a break here on the McDonald's Inside the Tribe. When we come back, we'll look at the highlights from last weekend's celebration. The McDonald's Inside the Tribe is brought to you by McDonald's. We love to see you smile. Dodge Different. See the friendly Dodge dealer near you. And by Continental Airlines. Business is tough. Your flight shouldn't be. Continental Airlines. Work hard. Fly right. And now to the pregame ceremonies recorded last Saturday at Jacobs Field. We are fortunate to have with us today 38 members of the top 100 greatest Cleveland Indians roster as selected by a panel of veteran baseball writers, historians, and executives. And now let's meet this very special group of players. This Indian center fielder is the club's franchise leader in stolen bases. He hit a career-high 15 home runs, drove in a career-best 73 runs during the 2000 season. Currently, he owns four gold gloves, five all-star game selections, Please welcome number seven, Kenny Lofton. A three-time All-Star, this Indian's first baseman, the all-time home run leader for the Tribe, currently leading the American League in home runs as well. Twice has led the American League in walks. He owns 16 homers in 50 postseason games. Number 25, first baseman Jim Tomey. Considered one of the game's premier talents, this Cleveland Indian second baseman in the last three seasons has accumulated over 300 runs, 99 doubles, and 56 home runs. Currently leading the American League in hitting at 352, a 12-time All-Star, owner of eight career gold gloves, number 12, second baseman Roberto Alomar. A two-time All-Star, he tied the American League record for the most consecutive airless games by a shortstop last season. He has 26 runs in 52 postseason games, the highest fielding percentage in the history of baseball among shortstops, number 13, Omar Vizquel. This third baseman won a gold glove set career highs last year with a 321 batting average and 106 RBIs. He's a lifetime 279 hitter and in three years with the Tribe owns a 293 average. Indians third baseman, number 17, Travis Fryman. A three-time All-Star, this right-handed pitcher's best years thus far include 1992 when he went 17 and 10, 1996 when he was 17 and 5. He currently ranks 10th in innings pitched, 5th in strikeouts in Indians history. Tribe fans, number 41, Charlie Nagy. 
He posted a career-high 299 average in 1961, followed that season up with 25 homers and 81 RBIs in 1962. He finished his career with 129 homers. Indians catcher, number 11, John Romano. The Immortal Cuban was the nickname penned by this catcher's teammates for this Cleveland Indians top 100 player. He had a career high of 14 home runs and a 280 batting average in 1963. His all-star season was 1968 when he hit 280 and led all American League catchers in fielding. Ladies and gentlemen, number six, catcher Joe Askew. This catcher was a gold glove winner in 1970 and 71 with the Indians. He posted career bests in 1970 with 18 homers, 62 runs, 61 RBIs, and a 307 average. An all-star in 1971, please welcome Indians catcher number eight, Ray Fossey. This Indians outfielder was the 1980 American League Rookie of the Year. Super Joe had both a book and a rock and roll song written about him that year when he hit 289, 23 homers, 87 RBIs. Fans, left fielder, number 34, Super Joe Charbonneau. Originally a shortstop with the Indians, made him their number one selection in the 1972 amateur draft. This top 100 player became one of the best defensive center fielders in the game upon his promotion to Cleveland. He batted 285 as a rookie, 292 in 1976, and won a gold glove. He swiped 10 or more bases seven times for the Tribe, a career best 30 in 1979. Ladies and gentlemen, center fielder number 28, Rick Manning. In 1959, this Cleveland Indians outfielder hit 363 with 20 homers in 122 games. He led the American League in doubles in 1960, a 1961 All-Star when he batted 301 with 85 RBIs. He averaged 284 for the Indians, enjoyed a 15-year Major League career. Please welcome outfielder number 14, Tito Francona. This outfielder began his 17-year career with 30 games in 1949 and 51 with Cleveland before being traded to the Chicago White Sox. He returned for a two-year stay with the Tribe as a huge fan favorite, totaling 45 homers, 186 runs, 172 RBIs, and 22 steals while hitting 302. Fans number nine, outfielder Minnie Minosa. This outfielder came up through the Indians' farm system, went on to hit 300 Major League home runs faster than all but four players in the history of baseball. A three-time All-Star with the Tribe, The Rock led the American League in slugging in 1958, homers in 1959, RBIs in 1965. Please join me in welcoming back to Cleveland an honorary co-captain for the top 100 greatest Indians team, Indians right fielder, number six, Rocky Calavito. An all-star in 1987, this Indians first baseman set career highs with 34 doubles, 11 home runs, and 86 RBIs, hitting an incredible 527 with the bases loaded for the Indians, a 489 career average with bases loaded, Tops in the major leagues over the last 20 years. First baseman, number 10, Pat Tabler. This top 100 player led American League first baseman in fielding percentage three times during his 12 seasons in the big leagues. A four-time All-Star, including twice with Cleveland, he earned a gold glove all four years he was with the Indians, hitting 312 in 1958 and scoring 102 runs in 1959. Let's welcome Indians first baseman, number 10, Vic Power. This top 100 player is also an honorary co-captain. His playing career with the Tribe lasted from 1977 through 1987. 
where he compiled some impressive slugging numbers, earning the nickname Thunder. His career 214 home runs ranked seventh on the Indians' all-time list. He hit more than 30 home runs three different times with the Tribe. He ranks among the Indians' all-time top ten in runs batted in with 749. A two-time All-Star, please welcome first baseman number 29, Andre Thornton. Stay tuned. More to come on the McDonald's Inside the Tribe. Back to the ceremonies held last Saturday in Cleveland. One of the most memorable highlights of this second baseman's career was on August 29, 1977, when he hit the only home run of his major league career. A terrific defensive player, he enjoyed his best year in 1977, when he had a career high of 62 runs, 8 triples, and 50 RBIs. He also led all American League second baseman in fielding percentage twice in his career. Please welcome back second baseman, number 18, Dwayne Kuyper. An outfielder in the Yankees farm system at the onset of his career, this top 100 player was switched to shortstop by Indians manager Joe Gordon. He possessed a very strong arm, quick hands, and succeeded at his new position, providing the Indians with a great power source. He hit 130 homers in 855 games, including a career-high 29 in 1959. Ladies and gentlemen, Indians shortstop, number 19, Woody Held. This third baseman established himself as a solid major league player in nine years with the Indians. A two-time All-Star, he batted an even 300 with 32 homers in 1987. On July 3rd, 1987, he became the 16th Indians player to hit three home runs in one game. Tribe fans, please welcome back third baseman number 26, Rook Jacoby. This Cleveland third baseman had career highs of 22 homers and a 274 average in 1963. After sitting out most of the 64 season due to a bout with spinal meningitis, he went on to become a two-time All-Star in 1965 and 1967. Please welcome back third baseman number 10, Max Elvis. This top 100 player was a four-time All-Star and 1953 most valuable player. Twice led the American League in homers, RBIs, and total bases. In his last seven years, before retiring at the age of 32, he averaged 27 homers and 102 RBIs, hitting 287. Ladies and gentlemen, Indians third baseman, Al Rosen. In three seasons with Cleveland, this right-hander went 45 and 21. Helped the Indians gain postseason each year, including two trips to the World Series. In the 1995 postseason, he was 4-1 with a 153 ERA. Please welcome back the Bulldog number 55, Oral Hershiser. This Indians ace posted a 16-12 record in 1986, led the American League with 17 complete games. The knuckleballer was among the American League's top 10 pitchers in five other categories. Posting 73 wins in 183 games with the Tribe, he had a career-best 265 ERA in 1991. Please welcome right-handed pitcher number 49, Tom Candiotti. This top 100 player was the Indians' ace reliever in 1988 when he saved then a club record 37 games, setting a major league record of 15 in a row. He holds the club career saves record three straight all-star years with the Tribe with 112 saves and a 240 ERA. Right-hander number 11, Doug Jones. This pitcher figured in one of the Indians' biggest trades and became the Tribe's Yankee killer. He led the team in wins in 1979 with 16, his 74 victories, making him the third winningest left-hander in franchise history. A curveball specialist, please welcome back to Cleveland, number 36, Rick Waits.
This top 100 player led the American League in strikeouts in 1980 and 81. An all-star when the Indians hosted the 81 all-star game. He won 56 games in five years with the Tribe and pitched a perfect game against Toronto on May 15, 1981. Please welcome back to the mound, Indians right-hander, number 39, Lenny Barker. This top 100 player began his major league career as a hard-hitting first baseman and outfielder. He did not become a pitcher until he threatened to quit the Indians unless they let him take the mound. And he became one of the best pitchers in baseball with a 16-8 and record in both 1965 and 66. Indians pitcher, number 42, Sonny Siebert. The Commodore led the American League in wins in 1960 and was an all-star in 1961 with the Indians. He went 70-67 and 67 with five saves during two stints in Cleveland and won 215 games in his career. Please welcome back Indians pitcher number 31, Jim Perry. This right-hander went 10 and 4 with a 2.83 ERA as a rookie in 1964. He led the American League with an ERA of 1.60 in 1968, winning 21 games, hurling nine shutouts. He was also an All-Star. His overall record with the Indians: 75 and 64 with 12 saves. Welcome, Indians right-hander number 33, Louis Tion. This Cleveland left-hander was a six-time All-Star and pitched four one-hitters, including back-to-back one-hitters in 1966. He led the American League in strikeouts five times, twice fanning over 300 batters. He fanned 2,159, going 122 and 109 with the Indians. Fans, please welcome back to the mound an honorary co-captain for the top 100, number 48, Sudden Sam McDowell. This pitcher led the American League with nine relief victories in 1962 and again was one of the leading firemen in 1965 when he saved 17 games. The right-hander went 96 and 92 with 45 saves in 10 years with the Indians. A member of the All-Star team in 1960, 66 and 68. Please welcome right-hander number 39, Gary Bell. This right-hander was one of the Indians' most consistent pitchers from the time he started in their farm system in 1954. A two-time All-Star, he was the first African-American to win 20 games in the American League. Fan favorite, number 32, Jim Mudcat Grant. Though he was not recognized as part of the Big Four for the Indians in 54, considered one of the best rotations in baseball history, this Indians pitcher was a key factor in their record-setting season and pennant year. The following season in 1955, he led American leaguers with 60 appearances, 19 saves, and 8 wins in relief. Ladies and gentlemen, two-time All-Star, right-hander number 20, Ray Narleski. An All-Star in 1945, this Indians pitcher won 19 games, had 21 complete games, and posted a 255 ERA. He was a member of the 1948 World Championship team and won the pivotal fourth game of that World Series, 2-1 to one, over the Boston Braves. He won 78 games and had 17 saves for the Tribe. Welcome back right-hander number 27, Steve Gromek. This left-hander won 16 games in his 1955 debut with the Tribe, striking out a league-leading and rookie record 245, being named the American League Rookie of the Year. His success continued in 1956, when his record was 20-9 and with a 253 ERA, and again the American League strikeout king. After retirement, he found as much success in the broadcast booth as the voice of the Indians for 34 years. Please welcome back to the mound, two-time All-Star, honorary co-captain, our good friend, Herb Score.
This top 100 player and honorary co-captain wore a Cleveland Indians uniform for 36 years. His entire 20 seasons as one of the American League's best pitchers, 16 more as a tribe coach. He is the franchise leader in games pitched, holds the all-time record of no runs allowed in 13 all-star innings. Please welcome right-hander number 18, Mel Harder. This right-hander and top 100 greatest Indians honorary co-captain was elected to the Hall of Fame in 1962, his first year of eligibility. He won 266 games in a major league career that spanned 18 seasons. Rapid Robert threw three no-hitters, 12 one-hitters, and 44 shutouts. An eight-time All-Star, he holds the club records for wins, strikeouts, innings, and walks. Arguably the greatest right-hander of all time, ladies and gentlemen, right-hander number 19, Bob Feller. Ladies and gentlemen, the top 100 greatest Indians of all time. We'll be back to wrap up this edition of the McDonald's Inside the Tribe after this. Our next McDonald's Inside the Tribe will be tomorrow afternoon before the finale of this series between the Indians and the Tigers. Great celebration last weekend. Let's get a win and get the celebrating going towards October. Boy, that would be nice. Uh, take advantage of the uh, Detroit Tigers. Uh, not a very good ball club. The Indians uh, looking for a pennant here in Cleveland. Uh, and it would be fitting uh, the way the 100th year to be uh, finally have a pennant in Cleveland. We'll get the game going for you when we come back to Detroit.